welcome back to NSK TV and welcome to another Entertainer Spotlight. The person I have uh, on the show today, the person I'm going to be interviewing, is literally the heart and soul of Nonstop Kids Entertainment. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. She's been with us for a long time. Um, she's won pretty much every award going and then some. It's the one and only living legend, Rachel Newman. Woo! <laughs> Right, thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, honour, the heart absolute honour. <laughs> well, when I say the heart and soul of Nonstop Kids, I really mean it. Because how long have you been with us now? Oh, I've been with you three and a half years. Wow, oh my gosh. Yeah, you've, yeah. Been, you've been here a long time. And you're one of the biggest advocates of this company that I know. Like, you're, you, you cut yourself open and you bleed pink and blue and green, I think. You know, it's... It's every single person that, every single client I've ever spoken to has always talked about how amazing you are. And I, I think you go 110% and then some to make sure people have an amazing birthday. Um, Definitely. That's what we all do. <laughs> well, tell me a bit about yourself, because obviously there was a time before Nonstop Kids. So tell me uh, what you got up to before you joined us. What made you want to join Nonstop Kids? Tell us about uh, uh, tell us about where your journey before you got to us. Okay, so my journey before joining Nonstop Kids, um, I previously well, I studied tourism in college, and that got me wanting to do like into in this industry, whatever it's called. Yeah. But then um, I did Footlands work, um, where I was doing a lot of leisure work because. Unfortunately, we thought she's going to be able to sing and dance for red coating, and I can't sing <laughs> like at all. But I did a lot of leisure work, which was really, really fun. And um, getting out there, having fun. I used to send on fun fair, I used to send the teddies around on the ride just for a laugh. So definitely put my stamp on there. Um, which Butlins were you at? Um, at Bogner, Bogner Aegis. So um, yeah, I did a good few years there, and when I came back, I decided that's when I was expecting my daughter. So um, I came back, and then I got into like I took some time out to um, have my family, but then I got into like retail work, but I just it just was not going well. I used to like cause mischief throwing crisps over aisles and everything. So again, that just wasn't quite for me. But I heard of non-stop kids and well, never looked back. Three and a half years later, here I am. <laughs> That's brilliant. That's brilliant. And I, I tell you what, going on to the buttons thing, I know a bit about buttons. Because obviously I don't know if you know I used to work at buttons. Oh what resort were you at? I was at Skegness. Ah oh. <laughs> there you go. Uh Unless you've worked at Butlins or a holiday park, you have no idea how hard it is. <laughs> it's, such, <No. laughs> it, it's such hard work. It really is. There's no, you don't really have an off day. It's just like 24-7, work, 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 work. But it's so fun. It's so fun. It's so rewarding as well. But it is really hard work. Oh, it's, it's amazing to start off with because you're away from home. It's just you and you're just out in this bubble, as we used to call it. And oh, mm. it was immense. Absolutely. So you would say that you're a born entertainer. You know, you've been, you've been, you know, you've, you've got that. I don't know what it is, but you've got that kind of that X factor, that thing that you can't teach. You've either got it or you haven't. Uh, yes, that literally. almost that likability factor. Now, there's a lot of people that watch these entertainment spotlights that want to get into entertainment, and and obviously, you know, you as well as working with nonstop kids, you've got your own Facebook page, you do your own stuff as well. You're fully immersed in it now. What advice would you give people that um, want to become entertainers that are struggling to find a way into it? Okay, so obviously I wasn't full like in entertainment before, but now since I started Nonstop Kids, it's it was always a passion of mine. I yep. always wanted to get out there. I was always the crazy one and I just wanted to go for it. So like literally since starting Nonstop Kids, it, it was just like a dream come true. Literally, it's like it is my dream job. So anybody who is like me who is wondering, oh, am I good enough or can I really do this? 
absolutely you definitely can as long as people like you we teach you the rest so yeah literally don't hold back because as you can see at the moment life's too short just literally just go for it and then come and join a, join a crazy family because that's what we are so yeah definitely <laughs> just go for it we're crazy but it's awesome <laughs> that's awesome and you've won a lot of awards like i remember that every year you're always about sort of second the entertainer of the year competition you're always second or third out of like almost 100 entertainers your feedback's always amazing last year you won the entertainer's entertainer which for those of you that don't know that are watching this we have an award and the entertainers vote for their favorite entertainer and rachel's won that which shows you how well loved you are um love you guys fact, <laughs> you, no seriously you've never had bad feedback you only ever had clients raving about you so what's your secret what would you say you do to make sure that every single parent and every single child has fallen in love with you what's the secret because there's very few people that smash it out the park as well as you do can i just say that before i answer that i think every one of our entertainers are literally immense like literally the team we have i have so much love for everybody because like even alex that's pushing it i'm joking (laughs) (laughs) i never mean (laughs) literally like everybody is immense and everybody brings something different and that's why we have so much to offer so like i feel really honored to be a part of the team and for me personally every party i do and i say this to every single client i speak to before is that um i always do my parties as if i was doing my own children's party and i give it everything i've physically got and if they've got a request i make sure i go high high and low to see that i fulfill everything they want because they might only have one party so literally i want them to remember that one party and to literally like go wow you know we you know but these they're immense so yeah like literally i think it's all about just building up a relationship having a um a laugh with them and also showing them on the day that usually you get there the parents are stressed you know they're like ah so just telling them that you know like have fun you know smile and literally everybody would just smile with you so yeah that's great (laughs) that is fantastic you're such a positive person i love being around you (laughs) (laughs) you're amazing um okay so next question um you do pretty much every single type of package that you could imagine in non-stop kids. Like we've sent you to do everything and then <laughs> princesses and oh, you name it. Every, I, I, every package and then some. What's your favorite package and why? Oh, do you know, I was thinking about this the other day and without a doubt, can I just stress with the entertainers, you either the magic or the disco games and dancing. Yeah, you are, yeah. Yeah. And I'm definitely the disco games and dancing because it's where, like, I can just literally go for it. Like, (laughs) it's just crazy, but I love the energy. And, you know, you get them dancing and being crazy and you're getting them to be worms on the floor or you could be getting them to floss. (laughs) It's it's just, yeah, it's it's electric. I love the fun-filled discos. They're my favourite okay okay i'm not surprised i was actually thinking you were gonna say uh the christmas package because i know how much you love christmas oh yeah well yeah definitely christmas no (laughs) i didn't even think about that but yeah no (laughs) i'd say like when we get hired for definitely christmas (laughs) yeah i'm a christmas freak and i can add all the christmas music into it because i was speaking to john yesterday and i was saying like my favorite thing to do overall at christmas is putting the polar express on lining up all the kids like a train and actually going everywhere doing the polar express so instead of conga actually doing the polar express that is my best thing out of everything i do on these parties <laughs> <laughs> literally especially at greater manor where they're they're up that they're away you know from home and they're there for christmas and literally like we get the 
biggest line going, even the adults, and we go around all the restaurants like uh, like we're on the train, like we're going to the North Pole. <laughs> That's hilarious. And obviously we do do an awful lot of Drayton Manor. We have a lot throughout the year. Do you enjoy doing Drayton Manor? Oh, I absolutely love Drayton Manor. Literally, like you're at a theme park and especially at Christmas, like I say, when they've got all their decorations up and they have so many Christmas trees. I remember the first time I went and they had them all up. I felt like I was in heaven. I was dressed as an elf. And they had Christmas trees everywhere. <laughs> it, it was like Rachel heaven. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I love my manager. He sent me here. And it was just as I got a plane off a plane from being abroad, I was the most tanned elf in the world. But I was like, I've landed in heaven. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's so funny. Yeah, Jay Man Manor is a lot of fun. And here's the next question for you. What's your favourite trick to do in the magic show? Oh, um, okay, definitely Charlie. I knew you were going to say that. Yeah, definitely Charlie. The, the response you get from Charlie is so funny because the kids are just like, you can go on forever with Charlie and the kids are just like getting more mental and mental and mental. And by the end, they're literally right by your face and still you're going, oh, it's funny. <laughs> they buy into him so much, don't they? Literally. Like, I, I almost wish, like, he was there, like, all the time. <laughs> it's just amazing. That's brilliant. That's awesome. Okay, and what... I've asked this to a couple of different entertainers. I'd love to know what you think about it as well. So there's a lot of parents that book non-stop kids for the first time. They're organising the, their birthday. They've never organised a birthday party before, and they stress about making sure that it goes right, and they want everything to go right and everything to go perfect. What piece of advice would you give a client to make sure um, you know what piece of advice would you give them to make sure their party is a success okay definitely a couple on this one so okay. my first advice would be that when planning the party just remember that if you're booking an entertainer you, you only need an entertainer now i you know banks of castles are great when you know that they're, they're a kid's dream but yeah. you only even need an entertainer or a bouncy castle if you want a bouncy castle and put some music on that, that you know they'll absolutely love it or if you have an entertainer you know again they will have a wicked time but non-stop kids by the way <laughs> literally like you only need one or the other you don't need both because they end up clashing so it's almost like trying to put mickey mouse with daisy duck it just doesn't work <laughs> okay yeah i'd agree with that i'd agree with that yeah and the second part is um what i'd say is when you're planning your child's party don't stress too much on the day when you're getting everything ready because they're going to absolutely love whatever you do for them because you've done it so just enjoy it and try not to stress about it because you, you'll have a wicked time <laughs> that's really good advice that's really, really, really great advice. And I, 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 okay, I'm going to try and get some more advice for you now, of you now as well, because <laughs> I always think of you as the expert in nonstop kids in tiny tots. You know, I you, love tiny tots. <laughs> you and Emily are the Emily two in is my. Emily's fabulous. In Rachel terms, Emily is fabulous. Like, oh my life. <laughs> she reminds me of you in that she's just got boundless energy um uh, and she's just mad as a box of frogs you know a little bit like you as well um and you and emily are kind of the people i think of as tiny tots experts so when when um when i need somebody you know when somebody first comes in and they go oh how do i do a tiny tots party it's like right speak to rachel and she'll yeah. she'll, she'll she'll hook you up what, and I know a lot of entertainers, both inside and outside of Nonstop Kids, get nervous when they do uh, when they when they know they have to do parties for younger children, sort of that two, three, four age range. What advice would you give people for entertaining younger children? Um, biggest advice would be when calling them over, don't show, just talk to them, go to their level, and also 
fit a lot of your games start i see we tiny it up i always start with games instead the reason is is that um all my games and all my dances are linked to like characters so, like i could do like i do musical bumps to hey dougie so it's jumping up and down because they know oh, hey nice. dougie and jumping up and down in muddy puddles to Peppa Pig, they absolutely love that. They know Peppa Pig, they want to jump up and down to Peppa Pig. So guess the theme tune, that's what I always start with. It's like putting Thomas, PJ Masks, Peppa Pig, everything. Else. And they know all of this stuff. So they know that you're a really good person because you've got all of this really cool stuff. And Got yeah. By by the second half, literally, they want to sit down and watch your magic show because they know you're a nice person and you're lots of fun. Also, fit in some nursery rhymes because, again, they know they're nursery rhymes and you always make it believe as if they're teaching you, not the other way, and they're really good at it. So they've taught you something. That's, oh, you're just a fountain of knowledge, aren't you, H? You're just a fountain of knowledge. And what's, what's your bucket? What's, what have you got on your bucket list from an entertainer's point of view? Now, you've done a lot in three and a half years. Is there something that you want to try and achieve that you haven't done yet? Um, well, or is it just a case of carrying on? I want to carry on with this and I want to try and learn new stuff to bring new stuff to the parties even more than I do already. Because um, there's nothing better than when you've done somebody's party before and they want you back again because yeah. that's like really heartfelt. So you like to bring something new. So definitely. And you're one of those people that always comes to the office wanting to learn new ideas and new routines and new things. You're always trying to improve, aren't you? Yeah. And, you, you know, it's just about pushing yourself out and kind of, you know, the more you put into it, the more you get out of it kind of thing. So if you really want to make something out of this job, you really can. So yeah. it's you, dude. You're amazing. Like, I'll seriously. behave. <laughs> totally you. Definitely you. Oh, behave. It's all and you. When I come to the office, I can see Anna and Coco and all the office gang. So, yes. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Well, we're hoping the office is going to be all up and running again soon. You know, obviously it's been... It's been a little bit of a while. We've been working from home, but hopefully soon we'll be up and from running again. Um, that's cool. Okay, so what's the funniest, stroke, strangest thing that's happened to you at a party? Oh, so, you've done so many of them at this point. Like I have in my career, had three children that I've made them laugh so hard they've literally wet themselves. <laughs> Literally, I had them laughing so hard they have actually wet themselves, and that's happened to me a few times now. I'm like, okay, okay, I'm obviously pretty good at making kids laugh when I can get them to wet themselves on command. That's that. So, what's the strangest thing that's happened to you? Oh, um, but there's been one where adults have been inappropriate, so that's really? a strange one. And also, the biggest one with kids, without a doubt, I'll always remember, I was due to go to Wales and it had been, um, the, it had been snowing. So it was horrendous to get to like this place. And it took so long. I finally got there. And I remember I couldn't find the venue. So I eventually found it. Luckily, I'd left like loads and loads of time. But I turned up and these kids kept clinging to me. And then through the party, it ended up that they kept like trying. They eventually licked my arm. <laughs> like They literally licked my arm. They kept licking it. And it, it was, yeah, it was crazy. I, I had to speak to the mom in the end because it just went a bit bizarre. <laughs> That's just crazy. I like there's an urban legend in nonstop kids, and I want to know if this is true. Um, everyone tells the story of you. Do you remember a couple of years ago, two or three years ago in December, when it was just like blizzard conditions? Yeah. And there was like we had about a hundred parties on on this Saturday. And only seven of them went through because every five minutes we're having clients ringing going, the venue's slowed in, the venue slowed in. And I had entertainers ringing going, the entertainer, I can't get off my drive, I'm slowed in, blah, 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 blah. I had, I, 
we had, right, this is the story that's told. We had a phone call from your client and they were like, is it still going to go ahead because we can still get into the venue? And, um, and, and it wasn't me that took the call. I can't remember who it was, but whoever took the call was like, yeah, let me just check. Let me just check to make sure that um, they're still okay. And urban legend has it that you were snowed in. You couldn't get your car off the drive. So you <laughs> grabbed all of your equipment in a blizzard and, and just so people know, there's a lot of equipment. Like we're talking PA systems, lights, magic box, games yeah. case. And you were literally walking to the venue in a blizzard, which you didn't venue. want to let them down. Is that true? I walked to the venue. <laughs> <laughs> you I walked? I my stuff and I walked instead because I couldn't drive. In a blizzard? <laughs> <laughs> So to say, I left my footprints in the snow, but yeah, no, that is absolutely true. I wish drive to not let anybody down, so I walked to the venue. <laughs> <laughs> if that doesn't show dedication, I don't know what does. That is. Oh, just... that's so funny. I I forgot all about that. I remember that literally walking to it with all my stuff. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't even know how you could walk with all of the stuff and carry it in one go, let alone do it when it's blizzard conditions. The snow was like up to like waist height. I believe I got my suitcase and I took everything out and put it all in the suitcase and carried the lights. It was crazy in the PA. It was just mental. <laughs> oh my gosh, Rach. And that is why you're one of my favourite people in the whole world. Um, oh. I always say to people, you know, people, you know, join Nonstop Kids and they say, Oh, how, how, how can I, you know, how can I make this, this company work for me? How can I do really well? And I was like, look at her and do what she does and you'll be fine. <laughs> you know, that's, that's literally all you need to do. You oh, are. I do love you. Oh. It's, it's so true. Like I said to you at the very beginning, you are the heart and soul of this company, Rachel. You are without a doubt the heart and soul of this company. You're the blueprint. If I, um, if I could duplicate you and make 30 more of you, I'd be, well, actually, no, I'd probably have a nervous breakdown, but I mean, it'd be yeah, amazing. Yeah, literally. <laughs> <laughs> it'd be amazing. Right, I am now going to do a rapid fire question round. You have two and a half minutes, Rachel, to answer as many questions as you can. <laughs> two and a half minutes to answer as many questions as you can. Sorry, three and a half minutes. Uh, to answer as many you questions take as you can. a minute off me? I thought you were on my team. Currently in first place is uh, David Burgess, but he is from Liverpool and therefore is a scouser and can speak a million miles an hour. Um, but we're going to see if you can bring it back to the Midlands, all right? So you've got to answer as many questions as you can. I have my timer ready. Are you ready? I have good intentions here, but I've got a feeling I get really more talk. Well, let's see what you can do. Okay, right. You got, you got, you got, you got, you got three and a half minutes, and your time starts now. If you could buy any, oh, sorry, if you could buy any type of food right now, what would you buy? A McDonald's. Nice. What color is your toothbrush? Pink. If it, why am I not surprised? If you could be any animal, what would you be, and why? A pig, so I could roll around in the mud. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> What's, uh, wh who's your favourite superhero and why? Wonder Woman. She's an inspiration to us girls. Woo! <laughs> Love it. Who do you admire the most? Um, my kids. Love it. What's your favourite summer activity? Going to the beach. <laughs> uh, if a movie was made of your life, what genre would it be and who would play you? A comedy. Is it Revin Wilson or, you know, that, that, that lady with the blonde hair? She's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, yeah. That, I'd go with that, actually. Um, <laughs> yeah. If you could be any flavour ice cream, what ice cream would you be? What flavour ice cream would you be and why? Salted caramel, because you've got a bit of smoothness with a bit of, like, stickiness and everything else. <laughs> bit of random. <laughs> Love it. Who's your favourite cartoon character and why? Daisy Duck, because that's what I name my daughter after. <laughs> if you could go anywhere in the world right now and wait out the rest of lockdown, where would you go? To um, Lapland, so I could help visit and make all the presents and put up all the Christmas trees. 
<laughs> Are you a morning or a night person? Morning. Uh, what's your favourite hobby? Oof. I'd say at the moment, I'd say running. <laughs> cool. Uh, what's the one thing that annoys you the most? Oh, arrogant people and people who don't indicate. <laughs> <laughs> what's, the <laughs> what's the strangest thing you've ever eaten? Oh, well, I don't, not really with strange, but what I do love is applesauce on toast and applesauce in sandwiches, just applesauce. That's very weird. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what is one of your weird quirks? Oh, God. I, it, it's, it's all up in my head. My head's just a bit weird anyway, so I think that's enough. <laughs> I agree with that. Yeah, I agree with that. Describe yeah. yourself in three words. Oh, positive, outgoing, and energetic. If you could trade lives with anybody for one day, who would it be and why? Ah, oh, I'd trade lives with Charlie Austin's wife. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, like I don't Charlie need to know Austin. why. I can guess why. Yeah. <laughs> um, what, what's the first thing that you do when you get up in the morning? I usually go for a run at about six in the morning. So that's usually Ooh. my morning. <laughs> uh, what's your favourite joke? Oh, okay. Um, why, do, why does Goofy wear two pairs of trousers when playing golf? I don't know why. Because you might get a hole in one. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Um, if you could get yourself anything right now, what would you get? If you could buy yourself one present and money's no object, get yourself anything right now, what would you get? I'd get a mansion. <laughs> With nice. A and everything. Yeah. Literally nice. all out. Games room, everything. Love it. Where would you go if you were invisible? Uh, I, I can't answer that one. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Most entertainers have passed on that one. Um, <laughs> if you could have any one superpower, what would it be? Ah, uh, to fly. Cool. The fly uh, to Neverland. <laughs> what, what is your biggest addiction? Ah, uh, talking, literally. I don't shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is very true, actually. Uh, what's the one thing you're most afraid of? Uh, I can't even say it. They've got eight legs. <laughs> oh, uh, what, what, um, yeah. what celebrity annoys you the most? Uh, um, anybody from Essex, literally. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. Uh, what's your least favourite be beverage? Ah, oh, um, Coke, full fat Coke. <laughs> and what's the most delightful word you can think of? Fabulous stick. That is a love it. made word. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. If your plane was about to crash, last question now, if your plane was about to crash, oh. who would you want sitting next to you? Um, I I'd love to say my kids and I'd love to say my partner, but I'd have to say Charlie Austin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I can't amazing. pick one kid out of three. So no, you can't. I'd have to pick him, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> that is brilliant. I think you did really well there. I don't know how well, but we will find out. Now, you were awesome. I've got one last question for you. I need you to do an... Yeah, I need you to do a um, an impression. Now it can be an impression of absolutely anybody. Um, it's completely up to you. I don't really mind, but you have to do an impression of somebody. It doesn't have to be a good impression. No matter how hard you try, it can't be as bad as when Kieran did an impression of Donald Trump. Um, that was just all kinds of terrible. So it can't be as bad as that. So I need an impression. Oh dear, mate, you, you put me on the, do you know, before this video, I was thinking, who on earth can I do an impression of? Like, literally, <laughs> uh, don't ever fire me because I'm screwed otherwise. <laughs> like, <laughs> I've learned this part. See, I was shouting at John's going, hey, George Ezra, because I always call him George Ezra, so really happy he did that. Um, 
Okay, so this is the only thing I could come up with because I tried to be Australian, that did not work. Tried to be Minnie Mouse, that did not work. <laughs> tried, tried to be loads. I've learned, I, I cannot do this. So, instead, I'm going to compromise. So, okay. when I went shopping, I forgot to get it. So, we've got to pretend these cookies, okay? Okay. Ready? Right, here we go. Yeah, ah. ready. <laughs> Who am I? Would it be the Cookie Monster? Yes! <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, I'm cooking. That is the only thing I could come up with. So, yeah, I'm it, the Cookie Monster. <laughs> hey, hey, no matter how bad that was, it wasn't as bad as Kieran with Donald Trump. So, we're good. We're good. We're good. That's, that's <laughs> legendarily bad. Anyway, <laughs> right, before you go, one piece of advice. We're, we're almost wrapped up this interview, but give everybody that's watching one final pearl of wisdom from Rachel. It doesn't have to be about parties or anything. If you could give what, if the people listening to this, if you could give them one life lesson from your life to finish off with, what one piece of advice would you give everyone to finish off? Okay, so my biggest thing is about mental health. Yep. And it being okay not to be okay. So yep. to anybody who's having an off day or struggling, just remember that trees lose their leaves all the time. But before you know it, they come back, they're full of it, and they even blossom. So even on your darkest days, things do get better and you come out the other side. So just hang in there. I love that. And I wouldn't have expected anything less from you. That was amazing. You're brilliant. You're an inspiration. We all love you. Guys, you have been finding out a lot more during this interview by, uh, from the, the, the legend herself, Rachel Newman. If you want to book Rachel, you can do so by going on to Nonstop Kids. Click on Team. Click on Rachel. You can read all about her. She's brilliant. Just ring up and ask for her. Uh, unless, of course, you're in London. She's based in the Midlands. So if you're in London and you want Rachel, you're uh, going to be out I, of luck. I don't drive London. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That ain't gonna happen. But uh, anywhere yeah. else, you're in luck. You can, you can, you can, you can have Rachel. Uh, but guys, uh, don't forget to follow us on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, follow NSK TV. We put videos up every single day. Um, but thank you for joining this entertainment spotlight. Thanks very much for finding out more about Rachel. And Rachel, thanks for joining me today. You were brilliant. Thanks for having me, dude. I love you guys. Uh, we love you too, guys. Have an amazing day, and we'll see you soon. Bye, bye, everybody. Bye.